Hello, it's Johannes here and it's Tuesday, so it must be Packet Tuesday. Today I do want to talk about that large PCAP that uh, we actually used in the last episode. It was like these uh, 14 gigabytes, I think it was, of sort of random uh, packets uh, from my home network. And I want to dive a little bit deeper into it and I figured, hey, uh, we haven't talked about DNS in a while, so uh, why not uh, look at odd DNS queries? Now, quite often when people look for odd DNS queries, what they're looking for are things like host names, you know, long host names or uh, entropy in host names and things like this. I figure, well, you know, we want to be a little bit different. We want to be a little bit sort of uh, more dive into the details here. So why not look at odd query IDs? And uh, that's sort of what the topic will be today, odd query IDs in DNS traffic, it should be pretty much normal DNS traffic we're seeing, so I'm not expecting any attack traffic, but well, let's see what we have. Let's see what we end up with. Uh, let me switch over to the screen share here, and um, then uh, let's take a look here at the PCAP. Let me just uh, pull up a terminal, and uh, let's start by extracting all the DNS traffic. So it's a simple uh, DNS sensor, then we write this to dns.pcap and we'll just filter port 53. So by filtering port 53, we get uh, TCP, we get UDP traffic. Uh, of course, no DNS uh, uses either here. So that uh, really shouldn't be a big uh, problem. May actually be interesting sort of what we see there. Uh, but uh, let's see what we got here. So we got about, what is it, uh, 62 megabytes. Uh, let's do a quick uh, check how much traffic this is. So how many, oh, we got about 370,000 packets. So uh, not a bad sample here. And uh, now we need to extract uh, the uh, DNS I query IDs. And the way I do this here is with T-Shark, not the fastest tool necessarily. Uh, but uh, quite nice and reliable in this particular case. And we use the dash T fields option uh, to extract the DNS ID. That's what T Shark Wireshark calls the query ID. And then uh, let's send this uh, to a file here. Just a little text file. Okay, this may take a moment uh, to run. Uh, while this is running, let me just open up a second window here and let's sort of see what we got. I should have used some T or such. I see one little problem here. We do get some empty lines. Uh, that's just because you know, not all these packets have a query ID. Uh, particular things like the TCP DNS traffic, the query ID should only be in the beginning. Let's just sort of quickly skip through here, see if there's anything else uh, that we may see that's a little bit odd. Don't see too much here. So uh, let's just do this again. And now let's filter all the packets that actually have a DNS ID. Uh, so uh, this basically removes uh, those empty lines. And again, I should have done T, but uh, this should work too. So here we sort of see up oh, there's some little thing I saw. I saw some that looked a little bit longer. Uh, let me just scroll back here. Missed it. Maybe we'll see some of that later uh, when we look at uh, the summaries. So how many do we have? How many lines? Yeah, 340,000. So again, you know, there are some packets that just didn't have a query ID. Good, but we have a good sample here. Next thing I want to do is I want to count these query IDs. So the usual trick here, we sort the file, then we use unique to count the the values. And then we sort again, so we end up with a list that's sorted by frequency. And um, let me just call this DNS sorted.txt here and see what we get. Ah, here we have the one uh, artifact I was a little bit afraid of. So uh, with the T-Shark option, if a packet has multiple query IDs, 
then well you know we we get here multiple query IDs being listed uh, separated by a comma uh, this messes up things a little bit here for us when we're trying to count frequencies something that we may want to dive into a little bit later because that's a little bit an odd thing to have two query IDs uh, for a particular uh, packet but uh, let's for now uh, just ignore them so let me just do this again and just do a quick crap dash v for the comma to uh, get this and okay and we see a lot of ones yeah nothing really uh, too exciting here uh, let's see what it looks like on the other end yeah we got some uh, query ids here that show up a lot yeah? so forty-one thousand. we have a total of three hundred and forty thousand uh, lines so 60,000 uh, query IDs possible. So you know, about five you know, would be sort of your average number that each query ID would show up. So I would say you know, anything sort of from zero to 10-ish kind of uh, would be perfectly normal, uh, but 4,000 definitely way out of it. Uh, so uh, let's actually visualize this. Uh, there's a nice tool that I like so to visualize uh, things like this quickly, GNU plot. So GNU plot, and then we just plot this file, dns sorted.txt, and then we just tell it what x and y axis to use. Here we use the second column, you know, the query ID as an x axis, and the first column as a y axis. So let's say this uh, takes a second to run here. Um, this, not the fastest laptop, I guess, you know, Apple wants me to by one of their fancy new laptops. Here it is. Yeah. Uh, and you see here, you know, lots of it is sort of down here in the weeds. So that's sort of that uh, zero to 10 range. Of course, we don't really see that very well here. We see a number of query IDs that show up 2000 times approximately. And then we have sort of these 4000. It actually looks like this is just half of what we got up here. So, um, well, uh, let's see what these are up to. And, uh, just as a sample, let's take the maximum query ID we have here. So the, the query ID that turned that shows up the most often. Uh, let me copy that. Then let's uh, run. Actually, let's t do this filter with T Shark. Way easier. And uh, write this as big ID dot pcap. And then as a filter, we do uh, DNS ID is this 21 Foxtrot 7. Okay, let's see if I got this right. Shouldn't take too long because of that DNS PCAP file isn't that, that big. Let's see what we got here. We got uh, about 70K. Let's see how many packets we have. And just to remind us, we would expect like, you know, 4,154. Let's see what we get. Yeah, 4,154 packets in this file. So, okay, uh, let's look at the first one. ID.pcap. And of course, we have to do this in hex. And let's just look at the first packet. Okay, here's our first packet. And you know what's coming next. Uh, we are going to pull out the little uh, cheat sheet to help us understand the different headers here. So let me overlay the cheat sheet. Let me actually just make this a bit smaller, make it an easier fit here. And uh, yeah, let me do it uh, like this. And then let me get my pen. Okay. So let's start with the beginning you know, 4 or 5. So version 4, header length 5, type of service 0, total length 0086. So that's 128 plus 6, so that's uh, 134 is the total length of our uh, datagram here. Then we have our uh, IP ID, 
three echo three one. Nothing going on here with fragmentation, not even the do not fragment flag set. Then the time to live, three foxtrot. So this packet originated from our network one hop away. Uh, the starting TTL was likely four zero here. So this here is now 63 in decimal. And then, and then our protocol here is 1.1 or UDP, you know, 17 in decimal. And our checksum, 7 echo bravo 2. 7 echo bravo 2. Then we have our source address. And let's cheat here. You know, that's, of course, this address, 7091.14510. And then we have our destination address. And that's here, 159-203-7183. And this concludes our IP header here. Next, we have our uh, UDP header. So let's take a look at the UDP header here. Uh, source port, Echo 1, Charlie 8. That apparently is 57,800. Then we have 3.5 as our destination port. And that's, of course, 53 in a decimal. And then we have our UDP length. That's now, oops, sorry, 0072. That's, of course, 20 less than what we had before. So that should be 124. 24, if I got this right, is our length. And then we got our uh, checksum. The checksum here is echo 5 to alpha. So so port 53, so we do deal with a DNS here, of course. The query ID first to 1F7, that's the query ID. We just uh, filtered for, so that makes perfect sense. And then we have our flags, 2400. Zero, zero. We'll get to the flags in a little bit. I wanna dive in them a little bit uh, closer. Then we got our number of queries, 001. Our number of answers, 001. And then authority records, we got zero. And uh, then our additional records, we also got zero. And then we got our actual records. Yeah? So here we have B, so 11. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then we have 3. 1, 2, 3, and this here is evilexample.com. Now, evilexample.com is a domain I own. I often use it uh, for uh, demos and such. Kind of accidentally that it just shows up here as one of the domains. But, of course, a domain that I experiment with, so it's not necessarily uh, really sort of 100% correct uh, configured. Uh, let's look at the flags here a little bit closer. So the flags were... Let me just uh, scroll things up here a little bit. Actually, let me just make this empty. And uh, so uh, this flag here, I want to flags. I want to look into a little bit uh, in more detail. And I have a special uh, cheat sheet here uh, just for the flags. So um, we got the two and the four flag uh, set here. So we got the two flag here in uh, this, and then uh, we do get the four flag. Make sure I got this right. Yeah. We get the four flag here. So our query response is zero. It's a query, but note how we have here a query and an answer. So this query includes an answer. Also, our opcode is kind of uh, interesting here. 
Um, it's also an authoritative answer here. That flag is set as well. So uh, that kind of makes it a little bit interesting. Uh, let's uh, see what's uh, going on here uh, with this. And um, let me just um, go back here and... What we see here when we look at the TCP dump output, it tells us that this is a notify. So uh, this is not sort of your normal query. You see here a notify, and then the query actually includes a start of authority record for evil example. So it's a weird query for something that we actually provide the answer for. Um, you can sort of tell here the start of authority record with like the primary name server, the email address of the administrator and such. Uh, so interesting. Well, uh, let's take a look at uh, what these notifies are. Uh, let me just, uh, I think it's uh, RFC, oh, RFC 1996, I believe. So uh, let's see what we have here. Yeah, uh, that's the zone notification. So this is the DNS notify. Uh, let's take a look if this sort of makes sense here. Yeah, for example, a notify request has query count greater than zero and answers maybe greater than zero. And there may even be authority and additional records, but we don't really have it here. And if the answers are greater than zero, then the answer section represents an unsecure hint as to the new resource record set here. So, okay. Uh, basically what this means is, so these notifies are sent by a name server if there is an update for a particular zone. And so these are not queries in a traditional sense where a client would query the a particular name server. This is a primary name server notifying its secondary name servers that are also authoritative for the zone uh, that, hey, there's an update. And then in return, you would see then an IXFR, an incremental zone transfer. That incremental zone transfer, well, it works better if it knows what's the new serial number. And that's sort of why the start of authority record here is included, because the start of authority record contains the serial number that's currently, or that's current you know, on the primary uh, name server. Uh, okay, so what else do we have here? And then we have here uh, retransmissions. So these particular messages, they may be retransmitted if there is no response coming back. Like there is a sort of an acknowledgement for it, uh, but uh, if uh, there is no acknowledgement coming back, uh, then uh, they're being just retransmitted. And that's kind of why we have the same query ID here over and over. Think about the purpose of the query ID. The purpose of the query ID in a normal query response is to sort of authenticate the response that we basically know this response belongs to a certain query. Well, uh, for a notify message like this, there is no query ID really to sort of include in the notify. That would be in the response. So repeating the query ID does not really add any particular uh, security issue here uh, when we are just repeating these query IDs with the resends. And then if there is like a prior not a prior acknowledgement for a prior notification coming in now, well, since it's still the same query ID, it's still accepted. So that's the idea here. The query ID here definitely does not fulfill any security role no reason to sort of keep randomizing it with these resends. It may actually make things uh, more complex than to figure out if a certain acknowledgement is valid that's coming back. Let's see if there's anything else here uh, that we sort of uh, want to look at. Uh, but I think that's uh, sort of it here uh, for uh, these notification. And you basically have the XFR, IXFR, and uh, AXFR would be the complete zone transfer. That's another option that the client has. But part of the point of the notification and sending along the current uh, serial number is that uh, now the client can basically just ask for what changed instead of uh, transferring the complete zone. But uh, that option still exists. 
yeah, and uh, just checking if anything else here is happening. Yeah, we have here notify four. Remember, we had the opcode here. Let me just um, put that over here again. So this is our opcode. Now it's not quite lined up here uh, with uh, the different nibbles. Uh, let me just actually move this out of the way. Make this a bit more readable here. So as far as the opcode is concerned, this is one, two, four, eight. So here only the four bit is set. And that's uh, why we do have this opcode four, which tells us that this is notify. And uh, yep, the authoritative answer flag is set. And then we have one query. And then here as a query name, uh, the so name. And then we may have, like I said, also the answer included here as well. Uh, so this is you know, very normal, very standard. And the reason we have multiple query IDs for them is because there's something going wrong. Like I said, this evil example.com, so on, it's not well configured. Uh, there is, I know, um, old secondary name server here, this IP address. So here my primary tries to notify it, is not getting a response back, and that's why it keeps resending that. So anyway, so this was the first one here. Uh, now uh, let's take a look at the, the packets that had the two query IDs to really uh, see what happened there. Uh, now, let me think how I'm best uh, filtering for that. Uh, so let's do T-Shark again. Let's read the original PCAP because we filtered uh, those out. And then uh, let's do a filter again for DNS ID. We want DNS IDs. And then let's extract again the DNS ID and uh, oops, dash T fields dash e and let's also do the frame number that makes it easy then to pull out the particular uh, packet Oop, frame number okay let's see what we got we got a bunch of them here yeah uh, but now i just want the ones with uh, the duplicate query so let's just Keep it simple and do a little crap here for the comma. Okay, and we here we have some. So let's try and get this particular uh, frame here. And uh, why not pull up Wireshark for this one? The PCAP isn't really that long, so it should work okay in Wireshark. I copy it. Let me see. Yeah, it looks like it. Yep. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, still not super fast. Okay, so what we got here is one of those incremental zone transfers. And notice how we're dealing with TCP here. So we have larger sessions. And then we have actually two DNS responses, part of this particular TCP packet. When we look at them, so stack query response. So this is not a response coming back to the incremental update. And then we have our query here. That was an IXFR for this reverse zone. And then we have our answers. And the answers here are you know, now different host names for the different systems uh, with uh, these IP addresses. And then let's take a look at the second one here. And the second one now here is the new uh, start of authority record. I'll blow this out a little bit uh, just uh, because of it lists uh, the host, host names here in my network. But um, yeah, so the new start of authority record here is just sort of sent separately here as a different response. And for TCP, to DNS over TCP, each one of these DNS response has its own length. So that's how you know, the system is able to delineate where does the first DNS response stop and the next DNS response start. 
So another little kind of odd thing that you would not necessarily expect, uh, but you know, again, uh, reasonably uh, normally here. Uh, this is just, um, I think I'm using bind here as a name server. Uh, some of this maybe power DNS was playing with this a little bit, uh, but uh, it's not really specific here uh, to any one of uh, these uh, name servers. So anyway, uh, what did we learn uh, today here in uh, this uh, little packet you stay? First of all, you know, yes, you may have the same query ID multiple times, sometimes just because they roll over. But if you have these odd ones, it could be resends like we are seeing here, but just uh, the same query is being sent uh, over and over. So uh, that would be a possibility here and definitely happens uh, with uh, these uh, notify messages. And remember for these notify messages, the, uh, the query ID is not really that significant and actually let me go back here. I think there is something in the security section uh, of this uh, particular uh, RFC, if I remember correctly. Where it sort of speaks to that a little bit. Oh, happened to my Chrome window. I guess I must have closed it. Security is usually at the end. Yeah, here security considerations. And here it says, yes, you know, there may be a, a spoofed a packet um, and uh, a spoofed notify can, s the, the query, the, so the slave may now send uh, these star authority queries out uh, to its masters, uh, but there's no real amplification here. Uh, so it's not really much of a denial of service attack. Uh, there are better things to do with uh, with DNS spoofing if, if you're choosing that as an attack vector. And then TCP spoofing, of course, but that's less of an issue, of course, than the simple uh, UDP spoofing. Yeah, and then uh, we had sort of the uh, two query IDs in one uh, packet. That's just if you had multiple responses in sort of a TCP session and just two responses ended up in one uh, TCP packet. So I hope you like this, uh, subscribe, mm -hmm. uh, notify whatever you need to do to watch these videos and let your friends know about it. Thanks for watching this and well, uh, see you again next Tuesday.